Hey squad, in this video, I'm going to be showing you the bare basics of this all encompassing strategy. It works on all asset classes and it also works in a bull and a bear market. So today's video with the beginner level of the strategy, it is the absolute bare basics that you need for the strategy to work. And um, these are the non-negotiables. So we'll build on these bare basics in video two in, and in video three, if you want to take the strategy further. But this is absolutely the minimum requirements that you'll need to use the strategy. So first things first is we have to talk about the anatomy of a candle. Obviously you've got the candle open at this level, the candle close, and then this is the upper wick and that's the lower wick of the candle. So um, what we're basically trying to do is we want to catch on a higher time frames candle, basically the wicks, the bottom wick if you're longing and the upper wick if you're shorting. And we want to ride that wick as the entry. For example, if you're longing, catching the bottom wick, you want to ride all the way until the candles close, if that is your directional bias. If we are entering only on the wick of a higher time frames candle, we are missing all of the chop in the body of the candle that could potentially stop us out. Um, so you're getting not only a safer entry, but also potentially the maximum risk reward with return that you can get for that um, position for that time frame candle. And um, it also lets you know how long you can hold the position for if you literally just want to hold it for that higher time frame candle. Uh, if we're on the weekly and if you're entering the wick of this candle and maybe this wick was formed on a Tuesday, you know, great. Well, <laughs> I've got a few days that I can actually hold this for. And um, wherever it's gonna, you know, end up is where I'm gonna take profit when it closes, if your directional bias is correct, okay? How are we determining um, what is creating the wicks on a higher time frame candle? It is actually market cipher B's blue waves um, on a lower time frame. It is the overbought and the oversold level of the waves is creating the highest probable wick formation on a higher time frames candle. It won't always be the case that you will have an overbought wave creating the wick. Let's just say there was a very tiny wick on this higher time frames candle. Perhaps the wave didn't get that high. You know, perhaps it got up uh, just to there, um, but your directional bias is longing in this candle's uh, sake. So you would actually be looking for the oversold level on a lower time frame to catch the bottom wick of the higher time frame candle and then ride it to the close to take profit. Here is a summary of the time frames that we are using for the lower time frame overbought and oversold levels. It's going to be one minute, five minute, 15, one hour, four hour, depending if you're scalping or swinging. And then for the higher time frame, we've got the one hour, four hour daily, weekly, monthly. Just for those of you who haven't used Market Cipher B, the overbought and the oversold levels are, it's positive 60 and negative 60 on my chart. So we're going to go back and look at a few of these. The next part of the video is I'm going to show you how you determine the directional bias. We need the directional bias. Then we know with a high probability if this candle is going to close bullish or bearish. And if it's going to close bullish, we know that we are trying to catch the bottom wick of this candle. And inverse, obviously, if it's bearish, we want to catch the top wick of the candle. So if the type of person that you just want it to be really straightforward and simple and you don't want to overthink anything, um, then this is the easiest way to do it. For this example, I'm going to pair up the weekly and the one hour time frame. So weekly is going to be the higher time frame. We want to catch the wicks on the weekly candle. So a bottom wick on a weekly candle if we're longing and a top wick on a weekly candle if we're shorting. And we're going to use the overbought and the oversold levels on the one hour to show you these entries once we've determined the directional bias. Directional bias, easy version. You're using the higher time frames, open dot on market cipher B, but only when, if it's also, a candle body closing across the AEMA following the dot. So I'll just show you what I mean by that. So you've had the green dot just there on market cipher B. You might say from the next candle, you're looking the dot and when the dot occurred, price a body close on the weekly candle had crossed above the AEMA. That's what this purple pink line is. So that's what you're looking for. You can see here with this uh, short dot, it wasn't fully perfectly closed under the AEMA. So you had this, this bullish candle first and then it went under. So it's important that those two things marry up. And I've just marked the current one as well because the dot and then following the dot, the price was actually above the AEMA. So that is how we're determining our directional bias. So all we're saying now, basically with this being mapped out the way it is, we are wanting to catch, and this is going into the next section of the video for the entry criteria. We basically want to long the bottom wick of all of these weekly time frame candles. Obviously, when the trend is changing, you're going to have this churn of one or two candles. And then from this point onwards, we're saying we want to catch 
the upper wick of all of these candles to short the weekly candle. And then we're going to use the one hour time frame to achieve the catching of these bottom wicks to long and these upper wicks to short. Okay, so for the entry criteria, I'm just gonna start with this quickly. You do have to mark the open price level of each higher time frame candle. So on the weekly chart, I've quickly just marked up every single candle, um, just a vertical line, and that will show us where that candle opened. That's very important for the next thing. Let's drop down to the one hour time frame and I'll show you why. Okay, so we're going to look at the longs first. So this is the criteria to actually enter the long. You've marked the open of each of the higher time frame candle. All of these green bars is representing the weekly open, right? So this whole period is one week and that's you know, for all of these, okay? So what I do is I just take a bar, and I know these indicators that do this as well, uh, you know, where you can check the open price of the weekly, daily, whatever time frame pair up you're looking at. So I just like to do it like this. I like to see where I am in the higher time frame candle because this entire thing, right? Wherever it's gonna go, when it goes, that is your higher time frame candle, right? I like to know where I am inside of it. Basically following the checklist criteria, right? We've got the open level of the higher time frame candle, which is the weekly open. That is the level. So we need price to be below the open, which it is. And then a one hour blue wave must hit the negative 60 line. This is the only one that's currently doing that. And then once that has happened, you then need a convincing body of a blue candle closing above the AEMA. And once all of that checklist has been completed, that is your criteria to enter a long position. I'm not going to advise you on risk management and stops. That might be for one of the intermediate or advanced videos. That's not for the bare basic video. And then you can hold it for the end of the week. That is where the week ended. So four days, you could have just been holding this position knowing that you got the absolute bottom wick of this week's candle and you just let it go to the end of the week and you took profit. All right, we'll look at the next one because the next one's interesting. So price was below the weekly open. You had that anchored wave there, but then um, by the time the price closed above the AEMA, uh, you were then above the weekly open. So maybe not taking that one. If you thought that you could get away with a high risk trade, maybe you do. But the next time we have an anchored wave, we are again below the weekly open. And in this time, when we get a convincing candle, not this long one, the one after that, full body, candle closing above, that would be your next potential entry. So that's how it filters out bad trades potentially. This one was also skirting. <laughs> this one's a bit crazy because it's interesting. Uh, we had the anchored wave, the price was under, and price was like half and half under when it crossed the AEMA. So that's an interesting one. And you do want to try and get proper anchor waves where you can actually see the blue of the wave underneath the overbought and the oversold lines the skirting is not great we can talk about divergences in the intermediate and the advanced video but um, for now you want to see a proper portion of the wave uh, being anchored underneath and then getting the convincing close above the AEMA We'll just do one more and then we can move on to the shorts and have a look at those. So on all of these weekly candles, these were the bottom wicks using this criteria. I'm just going to copy this. Um, we're going to move on to the short branch now. Okay, so the criteria is just the inverse now, right? So um, this is our weekly candle. And um, so is that one, the weekly open, the weekly open, right? And that is the price level of this weekly open. And that is the price level of this weekly open. So price must be above the open. Okay, great. Price is above the open over there. A one hour wave must hit plus 60. Okay, we've got that happening over here. A one hour red candle body must cross down on the AEMA for shorts. Okay, wonderful. We were having that over there. And on this one, this is unfortunate. Um, you had the anchored wave just there. The price was barely above the open. And then you had the breakdown happening over here. And that was really dirty. We'll talk about regular divergences are the only thing that can stop you out of this type of entry. We'll talk about that in the intermediate or the advanced video. Um, but yeah, let's mark up another one. Okay, this one's interesting. You had two nearly, nearly equal highs on this. Let's have a look. Price was above here. Convincing break below. Enter a short there. Convincing break below. Obviously, this is the higher price. So this was a better entry on this weekly wick than this was. You still would have gotten something for your trouble on that one. But if you're holding it to close the week, probably would have been stopped out if your stop wasn't safe. And then last one, just for good measure. There you go. Price breaking down. And then on she goes. So I've just gone back onto the weekly chart. I have stretched my chart out. I just want to remove um, the directional bias, open markups and show you guys just leaving the, um, the risk reward return boxes 
on the candles that we were indeed catching the wicks of those candles so you can see this is our entry and we're swinging under the wick so you actually are entering on the wick and swinging the bottom wick of these uh higher time frame candles and same for the shorts as well you can see that you're entering actually on the wick of the candle that is the bare basics that you need to play the strategy um i've shown you what we're trying to achieve using a lower time frames overbought and oversold levels to catch a higher time frame candles wick you get the absolute extreme entry entry point on that candle to avoid the chop to avoid getting unnecessary stop outs and to maximize your RR and yeah I've also taught you guys the absolute bare minimum to look for directional bias and I'm going to start tabulating the basic strategy and then the intermediate and the advanced strategy so you can compare um, the nuanced changes with each as we take a deeper dive into all of the criteria going forward so here is a summary of this video um, going into the second video for the intermediate we're just going to do a deeper dive into the directional bias getting maybe a more nuanced approach to that we'll be looking at if it is sometimes also safe to take lower probability setups and we'll be looking at also divergences for the entry i'll be discussing the take profit as well in the intermediate um and the advanced we'll talk about risks um so yeah i look forward to seeing you guys on those videos as well